up. Go back down, hold it for a second, come back up. Trainer Martin Gelbsband puts me to the test. Oh, I'll tell you what, my quads are burning. Follow along with this intermediate level workout in just a few minutes. Then finally, we're going to add our liquid. So this is almond milk. Quick breakfast recipes to start your day off right. You take a 20 second break, just looking 20 feet away. Keep an eye on Aniva as she learns how to prevent eye strain. I'll show you how to throw together a last minute first aid kit and so much more today on SoFlo Health. Hello and welcome to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and as you just saw, we have a great show full of workouts, food, and information for you today. We are at the Don Sofer Exercise Trail here in Aventura, where residents have been using this 3.1 mile long trail to walk, run, bike, and even rollerblade to keep their fitness up. We also visited another famous local park, and that's South Point Park in South Beach, with Martin Gelbspan. He is a fitness guru that is going to show us a intermediate level lower body workout right now. Today we are out at the beautiful South Point Park. I'm joined by Martin Gelbspan. He is an absolute expert in calisthenics, animal flow, and so much more. And today he's sharing what we'll call an intermediate-ish level lower body workout, right? So, yeah, so we'll do a lower body high intensity interval training. So the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna choose five exercises and we're gonna do it in a super set fashion, right? So we're gonna do five exercises, right. rest as, as little as possible rest after those five exercises and we'll do that between three to five sets depending on your fitness level. All right, so where are we starting? All right, so the first one we're gonna do is a Bulgarian split squat. So we're gonna need either a chair or anything where you can elevate your back foot so that we yeah. can do the first exercise. So, so let's we're gonna grab the... some boxes real quick, hang tight. So. We're gonna put the foot back here. When you go down, you wanna sit back onto that back leg and then come back up. Go back down, hold it for a second, come back up. We're gonna do 12 on each side. Perfect. All right, kill the boxes, get rid of them. We'll be right back. No boxes, what's next? So for the next exercise, we're gonna do a plyometric exercise, so a little bit of jumping. We're gonna come here, we're gonna switch. Two, three, four. I'll tell you what, my quads are burning. All right, so the third exercise that we're gonna do. Go for it. Is body weight leg extensions. We're gonna put our feet on this surface, put our hands on the ground. Okay. You're gonna bring the knees all the way to the ground. Okay. And then you're gonna extend back, squeeze your quads, and come back down. So what am I looking for here? You're gonna feel a little bit of flexibility work on the hamstrings. Yeah. But you're gonna feel your quads burning. For the fourth exercise, we're gonna do a little bit of lateral movement. So we're gonna do lateral lunges. So the idea is to bring the leg that's gonna be working up, and you're gonna shift to the side. Sit back on that leg, extend that right leg. Extend this all the way. There we go, and then you're gonna push back up. Yep, there we go. Come back, good, stabilize at the top, and come back up. Woo! Yeah. Good. Four exercises, I'm really Four feeling exercises. it. <laughs> the fifth exercise is gonna be a little bit more cardio based. Okay. But it's also gonna be very good for mobility too. So we're gonna go from a loaded beast to a squat. Got it. Arms extended, load the hips back, and you're gonna jump with your feet right next to your hands if you can. Okay. So you're gonna feel your hips opening up during the exercise. You're gonna feel your glutes working. You're gonna feel your quads burning. Oh, I got it. Here come we on, go. Come on. One more. Whew. There we go. Oh. Just stand up. There we go. Oh my God, my legs are starting to tremble. That's only round one. So if you guys can get anywhere between three to five sets of this whole uh, round of five exercises, that'll definitely be a very good workout. Yeah, as you said at the beginning, this is an intermediate towards a little bit harder side. <laughs> you can make it easier on yourself. Adjust the reps, take it at your own pace. Most importantly, get to it. Martin, thanks. Good shit. Woo. As you can see, that was a little more advanced than usual. However, if you stick to it by being consistent and you take it at your own pace, then you'll see some great improvement. And another area we would love to see some great improvement is with COVID-19. And since the vaccine is finally starting to make its rounds, you may have questions and we're here to answer some. 
Now that the COVID-19 vaccine is making its way into the population, albeit slowly, you may have some questions about side effects. And as usual, we recommend you go to the same place we go to for the information and the facts about COVID-19 vaccines, and that's the CDC. If you're concerned about COVID-19 vaccination side effects, here's what the CDC has to say about those. When it comes to the actual site of vaccination on your arm, you may experience pain and swelling. However, throughout the rest of your body, you may also experience headache, fever, chills, or tiredness. In most cases, symptoms should be mild and will go away within a day or two. However, if you're experiencing redness or tenderness at the site of vaccination for more than 24 hours after your vaccination, you do want to alert your doctor or if symptoms don't go away after a few days. And remember, to get the full benefit of the vaccine, you do have to get a second dose. It's important to remember that even though the COVID-19 vaccine is finally making its way around, we still need to maintain our social distance, wear our masks, especially when we can't maintain that social distance. Just wash your hands forever and do your part to be safe. Now, when it comes to the COVID-19 vaccine, if you're looking forward to getting that, make sure you check out cdc.gov so you know as much as you can about it. Check out miamidade.gov and browardcovidvaccine.com to find out where you can sign up if you or a loved one is looking to do so. Local 10 and local10.com have you covered as far as the news goes and everyday updates. And then here on SoFlow Health, we'll do our part if you will. Let's all be safe and get through this together. Stick around when SoFlow Health returns, a quick and healthy oatmeal recipe, a do-it-yourself first aid kit, and Aniva talks to us about eye strain and how to avoid it after this quick break. We're here at the Don Sofer Exercise Trail in beautiful Aventura, Florida. Welcome back to SoFlow Health. I'm Hunter Frankie. Those are Sebastian the Ibis and many of his friends. And one of the excuses that people have about not eating healthy, especially when it comes to breakfast, is that they simply don't have time. Well, we're here to show you that that's not the case with two healthy recipes right now. Before us, we have breakfast. This is one of the most important meals of the day because it's setting the tone for your day and it's starting your day off with energy. If you've already picked up on what we're making, it is oatmeal, but we've had two different versions of it for you. We're going to start off with the fast, hot, warm version of it in the morning. So it'll end up looking like this one here. We have bananas, blueberries, walnuts, and of course our oats. Now there's two different ways that you can make warm oats. One is on the stovetop and the other is in the microwave. On the stove top, all you need to do is add your oats and your liquid. Here we're using almond milk, which is in here. You put that all in a pan, you let it heat up for about five minutes on medium, maybe seven. Basically, the difference here is the more liquid you add, the more soupy it'll be. The less liquid you add, the more it'll kind of bind together and be chewy. And the longer you cook it, it will become softer over time. Now you don't wanna overcook it just like anything. And if you don't want to do it on the stove top, some people believe that it tastes better on the stove top. But if you don't wanna do that and you don't have time, don't worry, you only need two minutes or maybe three depending on your microwave's power. And it's basically the same concept. You're going to want to add your oats into a bowl first, then your liquid, whether it be water, milk, nut milk, whatever you prefer. You can add the fruit right away while it's cooking or you can add fruit after the fact. By the way, we're using old fashioned rolled oats. And in one serving, you have 27 grams of carbohydrates, five grams of protein. So you're getting a lot of macronutrients right there. We like to balance it out with some healthy fats and we're using walnuts today for that. So say you're like, you know what? I don't have time in the morning to put together a, a hot oatmeal or I don't wanna bust out the pan and use that. Don't worry, overnight oats are here to the rescue. So for overnight oats, you're gonna put your serving of oats into a mason jar or some sort of uh, container that you can store overnight. With your overnight oats, you're going to simply put in all the ingredients you would like. We have a tablespoon of chia seeds. We're going to sprinkle these in here and got some walnuts. And then finally, we're going to add our liquid. So this is almond milk. Now, kind of just make sure that the liquid distributes there. We'll put this in the refrigerator and it'll be ready within about an hour or two. What you're looking for is for the liquid to be absorbed by the oats and the chia seeds, uh, which again, takes about an hour or two 
uh, in most cases. You could make five of these, keep them in the refrigerator, and as long as everything's nice and fresh, which it certainly is here, then you can enjoy them throughout the week and easy meal prepping done with very minimal work involved. So, and the most important part, it's delicious and nutritious. No time, are you kidding me? Those oatmeal recipes are definitely putting that myth to rest. Now, what if you needed a first aid kit, but you really didn't have time to go and get one? Well, we'll show you how to make one using just the items that you probably already have in your medicine cabinet. Previously on SoFlo Health, we talked about the importance of having a first aid kit. We also went over three different types of first aid kits, which included your local pharmacy first aid kit, one you might find in your car, or the more complex versions for bigger trips or more severe situations. One we didn't go over though is the do-it-yourselfer. So if you're about to head out to a day in the park, or you're gonna go for a camping trip and you realize you don't have a first aid kit, the first thing we would tell you to do is go get a first aid kit, it's pretty important. However, if you need to throw one together last minute, here are the basics. When we're talking about first aid kits, the most obvious thing is the bandage. Typically, you're getting cuts, scrapes, abrasions of some sort, and covering that up after it's been cleaned is a good idea. So our next step here is to have some sort of antiseptic wipes and antiseptic ointments as well. After it's clean and you wanna make sure to protect from other pathogens, grab yourself some antibiotic ointment. They have them in little packages like this that you would find in first aid kits. But of course, if you have a two of it, just throw it in your bag as well, and you'll be good to go. And the next level of bandage is of course gauze. Many people have some gauze at home, whether it's like this where you can shape it yourself or they come and cut out squares or rectangles of different sizes. The biggest thing is you want to make sure that they're sterile and that you have something to adhere them to your body with. So this is medical tape. Approaching the end of our list here, the next up is some sort of eye wash or something to rinse your eyes out in the event that you get some sort of dirt, sand, or other obstructive object into your eyes. So this one is pretty much purified water and a little bit of saline. You can make it your own solution at home. We recommend just buying one, or if you're in doubt, just use clean purified water. Now this is something that is not typically in a first aid kit, but it's a good idea to have on hand. Nothing ruins a nice day out, like a headache or an injury that causes pain or an aching back, so we've got some ibuprofen. Last, but not least, but definitely something you probably don't have at home already. Everything we've talked about so far could probably be found in your medicine cabinet. This, however, is a more specialized item. This is a Mylar blanket, and we're going to go over all of the specifics of a Mylar blanket next week. However, we can tell you it's one of the most versatile survival items there is. It's something that can keep you warm, it can keep you cool, it can become a makeshift oven, and so much more. So if you're headed out to a camping trip, you may want to read up on a Mylar blanket and throw one in your kit as well, or you could also watch next week on SoFlo Help. I'm gonna keep walking, but when SoFlo Health returns, Aniva Zaman is gonna tell you some of the causes and cures for eye strain, and we'll even tell you why too much screen time is bad for more than just your eyes. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and over the last year, we have been looking at more and more screens. Screens of all kinds, from TV screens, computer screens, phone screens, it's enough to make you scream. It's also enough to give you eye strain. With so much being done virtually these days, the time you spend on your screen is naturally going up. So what can we do to avoid consequences for being glued to our digital screens? I'll let the pros answer that question. Dr. Nanasi, first off, thank you so much for allowing us to be here today. Digital eye strain has been around forever, but how is it more different now during this pandemic? It's 100% the duration of time that everyone's spending on their devices. Now we even have kids that are on their computers all day for virtual learning. And then I have people that used to go to jobs and be up and down during the day that are now just sitting at their desk at home all day long on the screens. What are some of the warning signs? So the most common symptoms that people will have will be a sense of burning, strain, they might have blurry vision, they might get headaches, some people might even get neck pain. Our visual system is really meant to be used 
used in the distance. This is where our eyes naturally want to sit. So especially if your eye posture isn't perfectly aligned, that little bit of extra effort that your system's putting in to keep a clear, focused image can cause a lot of tiredness. On top of that, we have that high energy blue light that's coming from the screen, but now we're just getting so much more of it. And that's where that extra fatigue can set in. Speaking of blue light, what should we do to avoid it a little bit or just be more cautious of it? There are special lenses that we can put in our glasses that filter out that high energy blue light. You can just tone down the blue light on your screen, reducing the amount of time that we're spending in front of the devices or that proximity to the devices could also be important. What kind of suggestion can you give our viewers about posturing themselves when they're working from home or kids that are homeschooling right now? For your handheld devices, this is the distance that we use. It's called Harman's Distance. It's from here to the back of your elbow. You don't wanna have a digital device any closer than this. A lot of our patients will have specific glasses that give them their computer vision in a specific part of their lens. And it's typically about right here. You don't want your screen to be higher than your normal primary view, and you don't want it to be too much lower. And if you do use a laptop and sit like this, as opposed to a desktop, that's something that you might wanna tell your eye doctor, because they might wanna custom tailor your glasses for where your device sits. What can you tell us about the 20-20-20 rule? So every 20 minutes, you take a 20 second break just looking 20 feet away in the distance. And what you're doing is you're just giving your eyes a little bit to relax. We're in a time where we're all wearing masks right now during this pandemic, uh, but how does it affect our eyes? I am having so many patients complain about dry eyes at this point because, you know, we literally are blowing our own hot air up at our eyeballs all day long. I would recommend that you see your eye doctor, consider a dry eye evaluation because sometimes there are other things that we can do to really stop dry eye in its tracks. Everyone is always saying, how do I keep my glasses from fogging up with my mask? So my best tip for everyone is that you wanna wear your mask high and tight. If you have a mask that you can pinch down right here, that's your best thing that you can do. And when you put your glasses on, you wanna make sure that your glasses are sitting on top of your mask. If you do this, it's hard for me to even try to, to fog them up. People typically think, you know, I want my mask down a little bit lower. And if I do one of these numbers, it's easy to fog up. So high and tight, glasses on top. Luckily, there's ways to get your sight back on track in 2021 so that you can avoid this digital eye strain epidemic and get back your 2020 vision. And it's not just eye strain. Too much screen time isn't good for your body either. Yeah, I keep telling people to stop using seven devices at once because it's not good for your posture, it's not good for your eyes as Aniva just showed us, and a whole slew of other things. Uh, hello? Hello? Well, you'll listen to me. Homeschooling aside, we have to keep in mind that too much screen time can be harmful. And Eva just told us about the effects it can have on our eyes and eye strain and how that can affect us in many other ways. Well, there's a whole slew of other ways it can affect us, including our mental state, our posture, and so much more. In the past, Dr. Sam Rasool talked to us about tech neck. So if you're going to be using your phone or other device, try and keep the screen level with your eye line so that that way you're able to keep your posture straight and that your neck creates a line straight down. Because the problem with you looking down here is that you're creating more and more pressure as you look down. If you're at a desk and you can have a screen that goes up, that helps a lot. In fact, we've even talked about standing desks previously on the show. So for a quick reminder, here's Dr. Sam. Morgan, you know that when I see someone in bad posture, it just sends a shiver down my spine. Right. You're better than that. We know we've talked about it before. But a lot of times with sitting, it's the little things that we change and the tweaks. Pain may lead you down the path to seek help, but it's not going to be the reason that you're going to get better. Lifestyle is. I always tell patients like, listen, if you want to be down here, that's okay. You're right. going to have neck pain. You're going to have neck trouble. It looks awkward. It may look silly but you really want to try to raise this on par just like that, okay? okay? Which is a nice little arm workout too. There you go. I'm kind of liking that. Thanks, Dr. Sam, for the reminder. Screen time is not just a problem because of what it does to your eyes or your posture like we heard from Dr. Sam, but it's also because of the amount of extra sedentary time that you're spending. 
Right now, during a pandemic, we are spending more sedentary time than we ever have before. In fact, homebodies even want to get out and do something every once in a while. And we encourage you pretty much every week on SoFlow Health to get out and to get moving because too much sedentary time can have some detrimental effects. Those include high blood pressure, high cholesterol, obesity, and diabetes, none of which we want. So what's the answer? Get moving and particularly stretch out your hips because as you're seated at a couch like this one for a long period of time or in a chair, your hips are kind of caving in on you. Luckily, Morgan has showed us how to stretch our hips out. What's up? Today we're on beautiful Fort Lauderdale Beach and we are talking tight hips. You wanna keep your hands in your knees, shoulder width apart, sticking your right leg out to the side, getting a nice stretch in that inner thigh, being sure to brace your core, keep the hips square, and then just slowly rock forward and back. You'll feel a little stretch in that inner thigh, but you don't wanna push it to the point where you feel pain. Finally, it's about controlling what you can control. So set aside some time to unplug. A great time to do this is just before bed. Instead of reading something off of your tablet or your phone, if you have a physical book, maybe read that. The idea here is to use all the tools available to you, not just to get through the pandemic on the virtual side, but also to make sure you're taking care of your health. So listen to Dr. Sam and watch out for tech neck and make sure you have some good posture. Use Morgan's stretches to open up your hips and not be so tight at the end of the day. And then when it's time to go to bed, set your phone off to the side, turn it off, use do not disturb, get it out of the room, whatever you have to do to take care of your health in many ways. Getting pretty close to having my 4,800 steps in. There's more SoFlow health ahead, but over the break, think about this. I've walked almost three miles now, so how much water should I be drinking per mile? Is it A, three to six ounces of water per mile, B, 10 to 12 ounces per mile, or C, 20 to 30 ounces per mile? The answer, when we come back. I've been walking almost three miles now here in Aventura at the Don Sofer Exercise Trail, and I have to say, I like it. Welcome back to SoFlow Health, I'm Hunter Frankie, and before the break, I asked you how many ounces of water should I be drinking for every mile that I walk? Is it A, three to six ounces, B, 10 to 12 ounces, or C, 20 to 30 ounces? If you said A, three to six ounces, you are correct. However, you should let your body be your guide. If you're feeling thirsty, drink some water. That's all we have for this week's episode of SoFlow Health. Thank you so much for watching. As always, you can catch previous episodes of SoFlow Health on SoFlowHealth.com. You can follow us using at SoFlow Health to share with us what you're doing to stay healthy. And until next week, goodbye and good health. Next week on SoFlow Health, if you've recently gone vegetarian and enjoy sushi, you're in luck. This new restaurant has an entire vegetarian tasting menu. Martin promised to follow up today's lower body workout with an upper body one, and he delivers, plus chocolate. Is it actually good for you? The answer is in store next week. We'll see you then.